Aloe Immunity, Wikipedia Article Audio Aloe Immunity is an immune response to non-self antigens from members of the same species, which are called alloantigens or isoantigens. Two major types of alloantigens are blood group antigens and histocompatibility antigens. In alloimmunity, the body creates antibodies against the alloantigens, attacking transfused blood, allotransplanted tissue, and even the fetus in some cases. Alloimmune response results in graft rejection, which is manifested as deterioration or complete loss of graft function. In contrast, autoimmunity is an immune response to the self's own antigens. Alloimmunization is the process of becoming alloimmune, that is, developing the relevant antibodies for the first time. Alloimmunity is caused by the difference between products of highly polymorphic genes, primarily genes of the major histocompatibility complex, of the donor and graft recipient. These products are recognized by T lymphocytes and other mononuclear leukocytes which infiltrate the graft and damage it. Types of the rejection Transfusion reaction A failure of cross-matching can allow donor blood of an incompatible blood group to be transfused, resulting in a transfusion reaction. Hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn is similar to a transfusion reaction in that the mother's antibodies cannot tolerate the fetus's antigens, which happens when the immune tolerance of pregnancy is impaired. In many instances the maternal immune system attacks the fetal blood cells, resulting in fetal anemia. HDN ranges from mild to severe. Severe cases require intrauterine transfusions or early delivery to survive, while mild cases may only require phototherapy at birth. Acute rejection is caused by antigen-specific Th1 and cytotoxic T lymphocytes. They recognize transplanted tissue because of expression of alloantigens. A transplant is rejected during first several days or weeks after transplantation. Hyperacute and accelerated rejection is antibody-mediated immune response to the allograft. Recipient's blood already contains circulating antibodies before the transplantation either IgM or antibodies incurred by previous immunization. In case of hyperacute rejection, Antibodies activate complement, moreover, the reaction can be enhanced by neutrophils. This type of rejection is very fast, the graft is rejected in a few minutes or hours after the transplantation. Accelerated rejection leads to phagocyte and NK cell activation through their FC receptors that bind FC parts of antibodies. Graft rejection occurs within 3 to 5 days. This type of rejection is a typical response to xenotransplants. Chronic rejection is not yet fully understood, but it is known that it is associated with alloantibody and cytokine production. Endothelium of the blood vessels is being damaged, therefore the graft is not sufficiently supplied with blood and is replaced with fibrous tissue. It takes two months at least to reject the graft in this way. Hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn CD4 plus and CD8 plus T lymphocytes along with other mononuclear leukocytes participate in the rejection. B lymphocytes, NK cells, and cytokines also play a role in it. Humoral type of rejection is caused by recipients B lymphocytes which produce alloantibodies against donor MHC class I and II molecules. These alloantibodies can activate the complement this leads to target cell lysis. Alternatively, donor cells are coated with alloantibodies that initiate phagocytosis through FC receptors of mononuclear leukocytes. Mechanism of humoral rejection is relevant for hyperacute, accelerated and chronic rejection. 
Alloimmunity can be also regulated by neonatal B cells. Transplant rejection Cytokine microenvironment where CD4 plus T lymphocytes recognize alloantigens significantly influences polarization of the immune response. NK cells can also directly target the transplanted tissue. It depends on the balance of activating and inhibitory NK cell receptors and on their ligands expressed by the graft. Receptors of KIR family bind concrete MHC class I molecules. If the graft has these ligands on its surface, NK cell cannot be activated. So if these ligands are missing, there is no inhibitory signal and NK cell becomes activated. It recognizes target cells by a missing self strategy and induces their apoptosis by enzymes perforin and granzymes released from its cytotoxic granules. Alloreactive NK cells also secrete pro inflammatory cytokines IF and gamma and TNF alpha to increase expression of MHC molecules and cause demulatory receptors on the surface of APCs. This promotes APC maturation which leads to amplification of T-cell alloreactivity by means of direct and also indirect pathway of alloantigen recognition. NK cells are able to kill FOXP3 plus regulatory T-lymphocytes as well and shift the immune response from graft tolerance toward its rejection. Besides the ability of NK cells to influence APC maturation and T-cell development, they can probably reduce or even prevent alloimmune response to transplanted tissue either by killing the donor APCs or by anti-inflammatory cytokine IL-10 and TGF-beta secretion. However it is important to note that NK cell subpopulations differ in alloreactivity rate and in their immunomodulatory potential. Concerning immunosuppressive drugs, the effects on NK cells are milder in comparison to T cells. Alloantigen Recognition Acute Rejection Alloantigen on APC surface can be recognized by recipients T lymphocytes through two different pathways. Hyperacute and Accelerated Rejection Activation of T lymphocytes Chronic Rejection T lymphocytes are fully activated under two conditions. Alloimmune response can be enhanced by pro-inflammatory cytokines and by CD4 plus T lymphocytes that are responsible for APC maturation and IL-2 production. IL-2 is crucial for memory CD8 plus T cell development. These cells may represent a serious problem after the transplantation. As the effect of being exposed to various infections in the past, Antigen-specific T lymphocytes have developed in patient's body. Part of them is kept in organism as memory cells and these cells could be a reason for cross-reactivity immune response against unrelated but similar graft alloantigens. This immune response is called secondary and is faster, more efficient and more robust. Mechanisms of Rejection Transplanted tissue is accepted by immunocompatent recipient if it is functional in the absence of immunosuppressive drugs and without histologic signs of rejection. Host can accept another graft from the same donor but reject graft from different donor. Graft acceptance depends on the balance of pro-inflammatory Th1, Th17 lymphocytes and anti-inflammatory regulatory T cells. This is influenced by cytokine microenvironment, as mentioned before, where CD4 plus T lymphocytes are activated and also by inflammation level. Immunosuppressive drugs are used to suppress the immune response, but the effect is not specific. Therefore, organism can be affected by the infection or cancer much more easily. The goal of the future therapies is to suppress the alloimmune response specifically to prevent these risks.
the tolerance could be achieved by elimination of most or all alloreactive T cells and by influencing alloreactive effector regulatory T lymphocytes ratio in favor of regulatory cells which could inhibit alloreactive effector cells. Another method would be based on cost emulatory signal blockade during alloreactive T lymphocytes activation. B lymphocytes Cytokines Cellular rejection CD4 plus and CD8 plus T lymphocytes, NK cells, humoral rejection B lymphocytes, cytokines. CD4 plus T lymphocytes differentiate into Th1 helper cells in the presence of IL-12. Th1 cells produce pro-inflammatory cytokine IF and gamma and destroy the allograft tissue, if there is IL-4. CD4 plus T lymphocytes become Th2 cells secreting IL-4 and IL-5. Then allograft tolerance is mostly observed, TGF beta induces expression of FOXP3 gene in the absence of pro-inflammatory cytokines and thus differentiation of CD4 plus T lymphocytes into regulatory T cells. Regulatory T cells produce anti inflammatory cytokines IL 10 and TGF beta, which ensures the allograft tolerance. However, in the presence of IL 6 or IL 21 along with TGF beta, CD4 plus T lymphocytes acquire tissue destructive Th17 phenotype and secrete IL 17. NK cells T lymphocytes Graft tolerance Direct allo recognition occurs when donors' APCs are presenting graft antigens. Recipients' T lymphocytes can identify either MHC molecules alone or complex MHC molecule foreign peptide as allo antigens. Specific T cell receptors of CD8 plus T lymphocytes recognize these peptides when form the complex with MHC class I molecules and TCR of CD4 plus T lymphocytes recognize a complex with MHC class II molecules. Indirect allo recognition recipients APCs infiltrate transplanted tissue, then they process and present, as any other foreign peptides. Donors MHC glycoproteins by MHC class II molecules. Mechanism of indirect allo recognition and therefore the involvement of CD4 plus T lymphocytes is the main cause of graft rejection. That is why the compatibility between donor and recipient MHC class II molecules is the most important factor concerning transplantation. T lymphocytes must recognize complex MHC allo antigen presented by APC through direct or indirect allo recognition pathway. T lymphocytes must receive cost emulatory signal. There are cost emulatory molecules on T cell surface and APCs express their ligands. Receptor ligand engagement triggers T cell signaling resulting in IL-2 production, clonal expansion, and therefore development of effector and memory T lymphocytes. In contrast, there are also such receptors on T lymphocytes that cause inhibition of T cell activation. If T lymphocyte does not receive cost emulatory signal, its activation fails and it becomes energic. Literature